Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Cranky Gun Reviews, and I said I was going to have a video coming out pretty soon doing a little bit of work to my Ithaca Model 37 to make it a more appealing gun to me. I had talked about, again, uh, shortening the barrel down to 18 and a half inches to make it more of a trench gun slash riot gun, something like that, and I finally got around to doing the work. Um, I tried as hard as I could not to get chatter marks on the barrel because you have to use some type of a saw. You don't want to use a rotary tool because it can get too hot. So I typically use a pipe gutter to score the outside of the barrel. And then I use a hacksaw to actually cut the end of it off, which is what I did. But hacksaws aren't very precise and I got a little bit of chatter marks. I did a little bit of work to try to fix it to make it look better. So let's just jump into the video. So anytime you want to do this work, you really need to establish a couple of things before you get started. One being the length of the barrel as it is before you do any work to it. And usually, you know, when you buy a gun, it'll have a length of the barrel, but you really have to measure from the face of the bolt out to the end of the barrel because that's the measurement that's really critical. So what I do is take a wooden dowel. In this case, this one has some white tape on the outside of it, so it's easier to see but you shove it all the way down until it hits the face of the bolt when it's closed. And then you mark the end of it with a pencil or a pen so that you can see exactly where the end of the barrel is. So you can see that line that I have on there. And if I shove it in until it hits the face of the bolt, that line lines up exactly with the end of the barrel. Then you can measure the length of the stick from the end where it hits the bolt face out to the line you drew, and that will give you the full length of the barrel. In this case, the length of the barrel goes all the way to the end of the interrupted threads. In some cases, it's not always the case, but in this case, it is just about 26 inches from the face of the bolt out until the end. One other thing that's important is to make sure that you have a tape measure that's accurate. I've actually seen pictures on Facebook and some other places where you have two tape measures side by side, and one of them, the inch tick marks, are not exactly an inch because they might not have been made in this country. In this case, I double checked this tape measure with two different sources and it is accurate. So I measured out my 26 inches on the stick and then I measured from the end where the breech face is out to 18 and a half inches. I put a piece of tape on the barrel and again, I validated this with not only the tape measure and the dowel. I marked where the 18 and a half inch mark was on the barrel so I could see how much I was going to be removing. Then the other task I had that was a little bit daunting to me was actually trying to get a new bead sight mounted on this thing because I've done a couple of these in the past and removing the bead sight kind of stinks because then you don't have a point of reference when you're shooting and I do want this thing to still be accurate. So what I did was laid the tape measure on both sides of the front bead sight and pulled it down on either side of the lineup notch on the back of the barrel. This barrel just happens to have a perfectly symmetrical area that I can put the tape measure on both sides of that. Then I measured back a, a little distance from where I was going to trim the barrel so that I could put a prick punch mark on there with my center punch. Make sure you take your time when you do this to line it up because if that thing gets off center, it's really hard to get it back where you need it. Next, I wanted to take my pipe cutter and run it around the tape line that I have on the barrel to get myself a reference point so that then I could score it and make it a little bit easier to use the hacksaw to cut this. I've done this in the past, and again, as long as you get the pipe cutter square when you're doing this, it'll give you a nice little groove that allows you to put the blade of the hacksaw in and I do like a half an inch at a time. I'll make a small cut, I'll move the barrel. I'll make another small cut, I'll move the barrel again. Here you can see the score mark on the barrel. This works out pretty well. You don't wanna cut all the way through because it'll actually mushroom the metal into the barrel. But just like I have here, I just made a nice score line, went around it four or five times, slowly progressing the, the depth of the blade. And then I take my hacksaw blade and put it in that little groove and very carefully and very slowly start cutting that and rotating the barrel as I go. But again, I did slip a little bit and had some chatter marks on the barrel, as you can see here, try as I may. But I have a solution to fix this, and it really doesn't look too bad now that it's done. The next task was deburring the end of the barrel, and I have two tools that I use for this. This thing is a deburring tool for the inside and the outside of pipes when you cut them. I've had this thing for years and it works pretty well. It's not super accurate. So what I prefer to use is this whirly bird style one that you stick in the end of the barrel and you spin it around. And this will take out small chunks of the metal, but it'll actually leave a pretty smooth finish. 
once I go around three or four times and make sure that there's no burrs and this thing isn't shattering as I spin it, I grab the other deburring tool and I will go on the outside of the barrel a little bit and again on the inside to make it smooth so that there's no burrs. Once I'm satisfied that all the burrs are gone, you have to take a nice fine tooth file and actually make the end of the barrel perfectly flat because when you're cutting it with a hacksaw, you will have some rough edges on there. So very carefully, you have to make sure that you're keeping the file flat as you're going around. I like to do it in three or four different directions, up, down, left, right, and diagonally to try to make sure that I'm getting it perfectly flat. I bought a Williams Gunsight Company drill and tap with 648 thread pitch, which is the same as the sights that I bought, and it did a fantastic job. I was actually very worried about this. I used my drill to drill the hole, obviously, and to tap the hole. Now, as far as the chatter marks that I got on the end of the barrel, I took a little bit of sandpaper and I sanded down to make it a little bit more rough, and then I used some super blue liquid gun blue, and it came out pretty good if I do say so myself. The site that I chose is an Expert 330 Seconds Gold Gun Site. I bought it off of eBay. I really like this one. It stands a little bit taller than a standard bead site. The annoying thing about putting sights in is when you thread it through the barrel, there's always extra thread. So I grabbed a Dremel and held the sight in my hand with a pair of pliers and gently ground it down until it fit flush. And here again, you can see the bead sight on the end of the barrel, as well as the touch up work I did with the bluing. Again, it's not perfect, but this gun has so many dings and scratches on it, it really doesn't matter to me. I just wanted to make sure that the crown was okay and that the bead sight was good. And once the work is done, you always want to check to make sure that you're within spec of what you expected after trimming the barrel. In this case, I was about a sixteenth of an inch short because I had to do some file work. And here finally is the finished product. Again, the beautiful wood on this gun just makes me smile when I look at it. Those cool engravings with the hunting scenes on the side. Even though it's not a police shotgun, now at least it kind of looks like one. Again, you can see the bluing that I fixed on the end of the barrel in that nice bead sight. There are lots of dings and scrapes on this barrel, so that stuff doesn't bother me one bit. And I don't plan on selling this thing. Eventually, years down the road, if I do end up selling it, I think somebody's going to think it's a cool gun regardless. Here you can see the amount of material that was removed off the barrel. I think it was around 7.5 inches total. And the overall length of the shotgun now is well within the legal limit, and it looks awesome. So the only other thing now that I see this gun that I might want to do to it is actually getting a metal heat shield for it, kind of like the ones that you see on a Mossberg 500 police shotgun or a retrograde that has the heat shield on it. I really dig the look of those. It's the trench gun look that I'm after. And this gun now fits perfectly in the Cranky Gun Reviews beat up old shotgun collection. Thanks again for watching another episode of Cranky Gun Reviews.